Today we are here at Pasir Ris Park and I invited two friends from the Herpetological Society of Singapore. This is Ying Sing and this is Shiva. Hi, we are from the Herpetological Society of Singapore and both of us are amateur enthusiasts that um, likes amphibians and snakes. Is it okay for people to just go around to look for stuff like this? As long as we don't handle animals because like handling them will cause them stress. It's fine as long as you obey our NPARC's regulations. If we obey these rules, we should be fine. Into the unknown, into the unknown, into the unknown. Wait, wait, they, they are going off already. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Apparently there's a lot of snakes around here and today hopefully we'll find some especially with the help from the HSS members Yes, there are snakes in Singapore, believe it or not and we have venomous snakes as well Why if we get bitten by venomous one, will we die? Do we have anti-venom? Um, so Singapore, some of the anti-venoms are available in the uh, hospital uh -huh. although it might not be species specific anti -venom. Okay, yeah. it's difficult to be a spotter We need to be in one with nature and then you know like shoo, shoo. Yes, you need to feel the presence and all of the animals you spot it. So this is an all-female species, so yeah, parthenogenic. Oh! So they actually don't need male. Geckos, they're actually a very special group of lizards because they're the only group that can actually make noise, they can vocalise their sound. And other lizards don't, so you think about the chameleons, yeah, the iguanas, they don't actually make noise. Snakes can generally divide it into two groups, the venomous ones and the non-venomous ones. So most are actually non-venomous, up to 80%, while the last 20% they are venomous. So non-venomous snakes, they are generally usually larger, more, much more muscular and they are found on the ground, so they try to constrict their opponent, means they squeeze them tightly and suffocate them, or they just swallow their prey whole. While venomous snakes, they have fangs, which are modified like large teeth that has connected to venom gland where the venom gets injected into the prey. How do you guys spot for like snakes with like such stuff? So yes. normally we'll use like headlights and porch lights uh -huh. uh, and we'll just look for like snake-like objects and then we'll just have a closer look and see if oh. they are actually indeed snakes. <gasps> Let's go! Okay, so the dog face water snake is one of the more common snakes of the mangrove snakes that we have in Singapore. This species mainly feeds on small fishes. I've actually even seen it feeding on a puffer fish. So they can swim and then occasionally they come up for a gulp of air. The dog face water snake, they are rear fang. Yes, so within the venomous snake group, there's like different fanged snakes. The so rear fang snakes means that the fangs where they inject their venom are located at the back of their upper jaw. So they have small rooms of teeth and then the fangs are at the back. So these things are usually mildly venomous, meaning that their venom doesn't really affect humans, but it primarily affects whatever they are, they are eating, like small rodents, invertebrates, yeah, small the prey. So they have to up eat the prey and then make sure that the prey goes all the way to the back of their mouth before the venom can be ejected. What good would it do if they have the prey in the mouth already that inject the venom? Uh, you don't want the prey to move because when the prey is in the mouth, if the prey moves a lot, right, it can actually in turn damage the snake. So mm -hmm. that's what venom is for, is to immobilize the prey to make it stop moving. So because what good does it have if you aggravate a rat and then the rat turns and bites the snake, then the snake might actually die. That's huge eh. How is it so big? It's the same genus as the Tokei geckos and Tokei geckos grow up to yeah. like 30 cm. Yeah. They're quite large. Yeah. So snakes have another type of fang known as the forward fangs. So the fangs are located right in front of their upper jaw instead of the back as like the dog face water snake. So it's right in front. And although it's like quite tiny and the amount of venom they inject is very little, it's actually very potent, which is why the cobras have it. So they will latch on the prey and they have to hang on there for just a moment for enough venom to be injected into the prey. And then they will let go and then that's how they wait for the prey to die and they consume it. So remember the last time when we saw a black spitting cobra? They have this type of fang too. This is a tiny little banded bullfrog that has just gotten out from its tadpole stage. So it's actually really tiny, but it can actually grow to like a super huge size. And these are the frog that makes the noises that you hear every night, especially after a rain. They will so they actually secrete these sticky substances that are actually toxic to animals that eat them. So that will deter predators away. So they are poisonous animals. What's the difference between poisonous and venomous then? One is they bite you, you die. One is you bite them, you die. So, or you die. So just remember, Snow White eats a poison apple, not a venomous apple. So she has to eat it and then she die. And then she, she didn't die? Her. Yeah, yeah. A prince kissed her and saved her. That's Sleeping Beauty. That was a mango pit viper we finally found it. Oh, 
Okay. Why is it called pit? Right? Because there's pit like in between the eyes and now that's where they sense infrared heat from their prey. That's how they find their prey. And vipers, right? They are front fangs. They have the most advanced fangs of the snake kingdom. Because of fangs, right? They can actually swing out. So they open their mouth almost 180 degrees and their fangs they will swing out. And that's where they will inject. Hey. Mm? Does all venom do the same thing? No! So different venomous species of snake, they have different kinds of toxin. Uh, so some of them, they are cytotoxin. Toxin where it damages the tissue layer. And then you have hemotoxin where it damages the blood system. So the blood will coagulate and become like a gel-like thing. And then you have neurotoxin where it attacks the prey's neurological system. So they get seizures and then they just, yeah, die. So it's like different toxins for different species of snakes. What I have on my hand here is a python. Now pythons, they are non-venomous snake, so they don't have fangs. They have serrated teeth, rows of tiny little teeth in their mouth, and they mainly kill their prey by constricting them, meaning they wrap very tightly around their prey and squeeze them, hopefully, that the prey will suffocate, or sometimes even stop their heart from beating. If you're wondering where we are at now, we're at Taiwan in Pythonism Cafe. So look out for upcoming episodes on our ventures in Taiwan. So this is the end of our journey. Thank you guys no for joining no us and helping us spot so many things that we probably wouldn't have spotted anything. So if you guys would like to know more about herpetology, you may check out our Facebook page, the Herpetological Society of Singapore, HSS. Bye! Just keep thinking.